The following is a presentation of TFNN. The TFNN Bull Bear Trading Hour. Every trading day, live at 10 a.m. Eastern. Call now, toll free at 877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The TFNN Bull Bear Trading Hour. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good Friday morning, everybody. Non-farm payrolls Friday coming in quite a number at 830 in the morning. And we got volatility persisting across the board. All the indices in the green right now, but we've had action in both directions to kick things off. Zooming in on the S&P action, quite the acceleration this week we've seen. We got a high print this week of 39.12 in the S&Ps on Monday. You traded down almost 200 points from that price level, missing it by about eight points, 192 points from high to low Monday to the low we had yesterday of 37.20. The S&Ps now 70, 70 points above the lows we had yesterday my goodness the acceleration we got from noon eastern time a high of 38 42 we trade down 122 s p points to 37 20 made it about 145 almost 2 p.m eastern time the volatility this morning zooming in on the action 8 30 a.m we get the non-farm payroll number let's jump over to that chart non-farm payrolls we add get the headline number both job growth rate surges past estimates, employer employers added 379,000 jobs. Employment in food service industry in particular, jumping by 286,000 jobs. Leisure and hospitality, which encompasses the food service industry, 355,000 jobs. It's to be expected, folks. Leisure and hospitality, the service industry, hit hardest of them all during the pandemic. They've been shut down. Encouraging data, even in the month of February, when we're still dealing with some pretty stark numbers for COVID, that they are already starting to come back. Uh, some interesting information here, whether you look at the numbers that they have. You have one economist out here. You have Ian Shepardson, not familiar with him, but he makes a fair point in saying the core story here, it's a, it's a point I agree with, is that the reopening of services will be the dominant factor in the payroll numbers over the next few months. In March, job growth could easily see a 1 million gain in employment unless there's a renewed surge in infections. The expectations for some of these job numbers over the next few months as we come out of this pandemic, as we come out of the restrictions, shutting down the economy, there's gonna be some lofty expectations for the market to live up to, especially coming off a number now where you're gonna have February non-farm payrolls to the rise of almost 400,000. Well, we better see some big numbers when we see the March non-farm payrolls, when we see April non-farm payrolls, you're gonna have to see a rise there. We added almost 400,000 jobs in February, a shortened month, 28 days, a month when COVID is still persisting. You're talking about 2,000 people dying across the country a day, and we're adding service jobs back by 400,000. We are currently about 10 million people under where we were prior to the pandemic. We're sitting at 143 million is the number of jobs that we have for non-farm payrolls. Prior to COVID, you were sitting at about 153 million. You spiked to a low of 130 million at the depths of the low of the COVID pandemic. Getting into some further analysis that they have here in the Bloomberg article, talking about uh, underemployment. Here we go. So the U6 unemployment rate, that's considered a little bit more accurate by some. Listen, the, there's disagreements and agreements over what employment rate is most accurate to reflect this, the, the economic factors in the society. The U6 is at 11.1%. So unlike the headline unemployment rate, the U6 rate includes those who are employed part-time or ec for economic reasons or those who have stopped looking for a job. You have actually hourly earnings increasing 0.2% from January and 5.3% year over year. Unemployment rate for black Americans hit some of the hardest during the pandemic in February falling for, um, excuse me, unemployment rate for black Americans rising even while you have the unemployment rate for whites, Asians, and Hispanics falling, jobless rate decreasing for both men and women, encouraging data, 
But I, I encourage you to look forward in this data because, man, the expectations that the market is going to have to deal with as we come into March numbers, April numbers, May numbers, and even June, we got 10 million jobs to make up. And the expectation is that all of this stimulus is there to keep these businesses operating in some capacity. So once we get over COVID, we're able to turn that key bring people back, open up restaurants, open up hotels, people are flying, the economy gets back rocking, we got 10 million jobs to make up. We better see some non-farm payroll numbers above a million over the next three or four months or the market is not gonna be happy because it is priced in, in a lofty way right now, in a big way. All right, what else we got going on? We got a lot going on. Let's jump around to some of the stories we got going on. Uh, how about Bitcoin? This story interesting out here on the Bloomberg uh, site. So. We'll jump over to Bitcoin, currently trading 48,700. We got a low print last night of 46,000, down from 53,000 on Wednesday. Uh, pay attention to this if you are a long-term, even a short-term buyer of Bitcoin at the $50,000 mark. So you have President Trump, as he was ending his term, passed anti-money laundering, okay? The government is never going to allow money laundering to take place where they can't track money all right now it doesn't mean that they're having that they that they aren't struggling right now with the way cryptos are becoming proliferated across the whole world but expect governments to rein that in because when you talk about whether it's terrorism whether it's just taxes okay the government does not like people able to transfer money without them being able to track it for a number of reasons the biden administration will soon have to settle a bitcoin fight it didn't start the decision could have far-reaching implications for the virtual currency industry all right the battle concerns last minute rules proposed by the outgoing trump administration that would create new requirements for financial services forms to record the identities of cryptocurrency holders think about that Part of the huge attraction to crypto right now is the ability to store them without basically a name tied to it, right? Whether you have a wallet, the measures are meant to smother attempts to use Bitcoin and other cryptos for money laundering or to finance illegal activities. If adopted, they could cause crypto prices to plummet, according to some analysts. You better believe if they start putting in restrictions... Okay, now you have everybody fighting this, of course. Heavyweights from both K Street, Wall Street, mobilized against the rule, including U.S. Chamber of Commerce, Fidelity, venture capital firm Union Square Ventures. It's a whole list of them. And then, of course, you have the big crypto companies out there. They don't want that. That's not going to be good for their business. Blockchain, Coinbase. Uh, after President Trump, he had lost the election. And during that time, the lame duck session, Treasury Department raced to issue rules which fell under the Financial Crimes Enforcement Network, FinCEN. The move generated thousands of negative comments. Well, the crypto world, of course. Folks, the government is not going to let this happen, all right? I mean, Steve Rhodes has been out there talking about it many times. Um, the government, number one, is not going to allow, and listen, it's to be decided how this plays out. But they're going to do their best to make sure, number one, the government has the ability to control the money supply through the Federal Reserve. Okay, they don't want to relinquish that in any way. And they also don't want to want to relinquish the ability to track financial transactions for a number of reason, reasons, whether it's illegal activities or whether it's tax purposes. They want both. And I, my expectation is, is that they will get both, folks. The government can pass something. They can say we have to track it. You have to put a name behind every single Bitcoin transaction. Not sure what that does to Bitcoin, but we're sitting at lofty levels of 50,000 right now, 48,000, 485. All right, we got markets jumping around positive, negative. We're back down near the lows, 37.69, positive by about three points in the S&P so far. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back in three minutes. Hi, folks. Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over to the front page of TFNN and you'll find Market Insights under Trading Newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. 
I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them, folks. If you're not currently using the TAS Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The TAS Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, TAS understands that in today's technological world, the use of top-flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the TAS Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. Hey there, I'm Andy Arbertine with Tiger Precious Metals and Stones. Whether you're looking to buy and sell precious metals or trying to find the perfect diamond ring, I'm here to help. I have over 15 years of experience with diamonds and precious metals. You can call me directly at 727-329-8245 and I will personally answer any questions you have and help you find exactly what you're looking for. I will be your personal concierge in the metal and stone business. Give me a call today, 727-329-8245. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. We have the S&Ps up 14 points right down. NASDAQ 100 off 37. Checking out some of the tech stocks. Quite the oscillation this morning. We had everything much higher on that jobs number. So we got a little bit of an acceleration to lower prices. The NASDAQ 100, I'm going to zoom it in on a one minute. Whoops, excuse me, a one minute just to see the full spectrum of action this morning. So we get the jobs printed 830. We're sitting right at 12,500. You trade down to 12,375. Interesting. We got an acceleration to that level just at 10 a.m. this morning. We also got right to that level three minutes ago. All right. So that'll be a critical level on the lower side here as we were there at 830. We were there at 10 o'clock. We were also there at 1015, 12,375. Remarkable when you look at the highs we made. You're talking about 250 points above that price level. That's a solid 2% up two percent down we're near the lower boundary you put this on a five minute just to see the action we had across the week you traded from 13,328 down a full thousand points in the s ps to the overnight low last night the acceleration we had last night the lows in the nasdaq 100 you're talking about 12,306 as you can see though this area of about 12,375, call it 12,350, also where we bounced around, whether it was 3.30 in the morning, whether it was about 5 in the morning as well. It's been an exciting week in the markets. We'll see where we hold in terms of the volatility so far. S&P's at 3,776, positive by about 11 points right now. Jumping back into that jobs data. So leisure and hospitality, 355,000. Of the 355,000, you had food service attributing almost 286,000. All the other industries combined, you're talking about pretty small numbers and it's to be expected. The service industry hit the hardest. Professional and business services, you added 63,000. Healthcare and social assistance, 45. Retail, 41. Manufacturing, 21. Below that, you're talking about just uh, in the single digits. And in terms of losing jobs, construction, losing 61,000 and government losing 86,000. Uh, again, 
I really encourage you to look for the next months, the volatility that we may see, folks, when we come into some of the lofty expectations of some of the numbers that we'll be looking for when we are actually done with COVID. I mean, imagine when we come to a level where we're talking about reaching close to herd immunity, hopefully in the next three or four months, maybe a little bit longer, but the expectation is every American is going to have access to a vaccine over the next 90 days. Well, if that's the case, then the next 100 to 115 days, we should reach a level approaching herd immunity. Now, it might take a little bit longer than that, just because everybody has access doesn't mean necessarily, unfortunately so, in my opinion, that they're not going to get that access in terms of just going out themselves. But it's coming right now. And that means that the jobs should be coming right now, too. Because once we're there, the reopen has happened. Restaurants are going to be open. Hotels, hopefully, are going to be open. It's going to take some time for those travels. But I encourage you, if you're already planning some travel, you're thinking about it, get it done on JetBlue right now. Uh, I was looking at it yesterday. If you book a flight, I believe, through this month, by April 1st, you can cancel or change that for free. So time is running out for some of these deals because hey, JetBlue sees the writing on the wall. And I believe it was April 1st. You book a flight right now, free change fees, free cancellations. Check it out because that we're coming in and those deals aren't going to be out there as we get in the next two, three months. And then everybody is trying to plan their travels like we all want to in the future. All right. Jumping around to what else we got going on. Let's jump back to some of the stories out here. We got to talk about the yields. So we spiked to 1.62% after a strong jobs report. This yield, it just persists in a big way. We get the 10-year right now. Quite a rebound from where we were. We spiked to a low of 131.23. That correlates to a yield in the 10-year, about 1.62%. We've rebounded now to 132.06. You saw the acceleration yesterday in terms of lower price from 133.04. I mean, think about it. Just yesterday, we were at 133.04, and overnight, we're at 133.23. You back thing, this thing up on a daily. The drop-off we've seen from a 138 print to start the year, let alone you go back to August, and we were trading at above 140 in the 10-year, and you just got a 131 print overnight in that 10-year, correlating to yields of 1.6%. You had Powell out there yesterday, not really calming down the markets in a big way as bonds persisted, accelerated to lower price and higher yield, and how that reverberates whether it reverberates in terms of tech stocks getting hit when money ain't going to be cheap like it was. You know, you see some of these growth companies, if they start having to pay up for the type of loans, debt, et cetera, that they're talking about to accelerate their growth. Maybe the, uh, the, the multiples that they're priced into, not quite a fair assessment. All right, let's jump over. We had a question from our man Ryan in the YouTube Tiger Stand talking about Salesforce, CRM. So we have some Salesforce in my newsletter, Rocket Equities and Options. Uh, quite the pullback we've had here since the highs of February 18th, let alone the highs that we had all the way back in September now of 284. I got a Fibonacci number up here from the lows of March to the acceleration to the highs, going back to that September high, we got quite an acceleration from their August earnings. You accelerate all the way higher from about a price point coming into those earnings of about 210. You spike to 284 within a week. You come out with the earnings in November, December. Now, their announcement or the reports, the first reports of their purchase of Slack for about $27.7 billion, I think something to that tune. Market a little worried they were overpaying for that company, you accelerate to about 220. You come out with the earnings recently on February 25th. You accelerate low with tech stocks. We make a low yesterday in Salesforce, a low of 201.51. Uh, if you're looking to get into this, Ryan, um, you know we're coming right back to the 50% here. We're below the 382. You are into your area here, right in the area that you kind of had a first acceleration on some pretty serious volume. So I'm going to zoom in on the action. You had the first pop on August 25th, which I believe was prior to their earnings, right? We got 27 million shares traded. The low on that day is 210. Yes, the low on that day is 210. The high on that day is 218. You come out with their earnings overnight, you accelerate higher. And then we also have a high volume bar here on December 20, uh, second, excuse me, a low of 215. Um, so when I look at these two numbers, right, you also have an area that we've bounced around. Maybe that's support from July high there. We're also reaching an area that was resistance at one point, could turn into support as we are here in August. But anytime, you know, you, you've now backed off 
almost 40 percent from the highs made of 284, definitely an irrational high. They had to factor in the price that they were spending almost $30 billion on Slack and how that plays into things in a big way. Um, and Ryan says he started a small position when it filled the gap uh, 210. Um, yeah, so I like that. And I like the fact it's a small position. You know, I've said many times, if you're building positions in some of these equities, boy, we might see some volatility. I made the case earlier in the show, we're going to have some lost, lofty expectations for jobs data. It's time for rhetoric to meet reality, right? The rhetoric is we open back up the economy. We get over COVID. These jobs come back. Well, we're about to get over COVID. That means the jobs now have to come back. Whether that happens, we're going to find out in the next three to six months in a big way. Because after six months, everything's open. That's it. You know, we're there. Where are the jobs? So you might see a pullback. There's no need to enter in full positions right now. But yeah, I like this. I like this area in a big way. We're at the 50 percent. Enter with a small position. Doesn't mean you can't pull back to maybe the 179 area, especially if we get a market pullback. But yeah, you're a Dow component company. You're in the, you're in the cloud. Um, strong company in the long term in a big way. That's why we're in it. Find just the Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back. Hi, folks. This is Tom O'Brien. The printing presses are working 24 hours a day, seven days a week. The U.S. deficit has risen 200% in one year with no end in sight. The markets are looking for an additional stimulus bill to get us through this once-in-a-generation pandemic. There is no free lunch, folks. The more stimulus dollars put into the marketplace, the less your dollar is worth each and every day. This is the time to protect yourself with a portion of your portfolio in the metal market. The Gold Report comes out each Monday morning. I bisect and dissect the dollar, silver, gold, the XAU, and the HUI. The Gold Report is a long-term hedge against the dilution of your buying power. The U.S. has put more than $6 trillion into the marketplace in the last six months, with more expected in the next few months. The market did and does need the stimulus, but it will have long-term implications on our buying power. The Gold Report comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee. Go to TFNN.com and order the Gold Report now. Protect your buying power. Order the Gold Report now. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find the newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den Trading Room, trading software, and educational webinars for all trading levels and make sure you check out tiger tv for free on tfnn.com or tfnn's youtube channel for live financial content from 8 30 a.m to 4 p.m eastern on market days stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be tfnn educating investors TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome.
Welcome back, folks. We've got the markets accelerating lower price yet again. we got S&Ps down about four points right now, putting it back on a one minute just to see the volatility. We're back at that critical level. We just touched 37.60, almost to the tick of where we were at 10 o'clock and within about a few points of where we were again at 8.30. Look for that area to be support today of where we may hold. We get the below that level uh, in the S&Ps. You get below 37.60, 37.20, definitely in play. The lows of yesterday uh, on the acceleration lower. All right, jumping around to some of the other equities with news today. So Norwegian, these cruise lines, you know, I've talked about. The, the reopening is a big trade that has occurred. We'll pull up Norwegian on the daily, right? You spike from basically November 1st when we start getting the efficacy data of some of the vaccines. You're at $15. You spike all the way to 35 Putting this back on a three-year weekly to see the real fall off. You're talking about $60 was the level we were at in Norwegian before COVID hit. You spiked to 7 We're back down 15% today, though, on Norwegian. It's not all going to be rosy data in the future as this reopening trade occurs. Now, Norwegian pushing out 47.58 million shares. Plans to use the proceeds to retire exchangeable debt held by private equity firm El Caterton. Nonetheless, they got a share offer. You know, you can't fault some of these companies, folks. You've gone from a price point of $7 flirting with bankruptcy to now $35 Norwegian using that opportunity to raise some capital, make sure that they are liquid to stay in business, uh, and you're down now from 35 to 28. You're talking about a 20% haircut. You're going to see volatility persist in those stocks in a big way. Now, if you're a long-term buyer, you're a long-term holder, these are equities that, that are worth taking a look at. I mean, this cruise industry, it's coming back. It's going to probably be the last thing that does come back, but it will come back. And it looks like now, especially when you see them pushing out how many shares was it? Almost 50 million shares. So 50 million shares, if it was, you know, you're talking about $30 or so, that's $1.5 billion that they are raising to expire some debt, shore up their balance sheet, make sure that they are positioned to sustain even the next few months of the hardships they may face. Um, it's something to keep your eye on because there will be opportunities. Jumping around to some of the other ones, Carnival's down 10% on that news as well probably today. Again, Carnival goes from 50 down to 7. You're sitting still at 50% of where you were prior to COVID. Jumping around to some of the airlines. Airlines, you have American down 7.6% today uh, from $30 prior to COVID to 8. You're back today. You got a high print of 22.59, and just like that, you give up 7, 8%. Delta, one of the strongest airlines out there, down 5% today. You almost got it all back in Delta from 60 down to 17, back to 50. Uh, really interesting of what's going to happen in this market as you persist. We come out of COVID, the rotation occurs. Maybe it's from tech stocks. Maybe it's going into some of these cruise ships. But, hey, it's not an easy game. It's not like these cruise ships are going to be a one-way ticket to future higher prices. And we're seeing that today, this morning, as they still have quite a hump to get over. All right, some of the other companies out there with earnings. Costco out with numbers 214 a share. Market was looking for 245. Revenue came in above forecast, so they, they take in extra revenue. They're spending more money, though, not making as much as they anticipated. Comp store sales rising 13%. Digital sales surging 76%. They experienced supply chain issues resulting in higher costs. Not, not, not a story of in itself. And that's the weekly. It's been quite a pullback for a lot of these, uh, whether it's the Walmarts, right? Costco, Kroger. We were talking about it with Kevin Hinks yesterday on the program. Costco's down about 2.9% today to 309.74 on their earnings after the bell last night. Checking out some of the other companies. Walmart has had quite a pullback. We make a low of 126 yesterday. Let's put it on the daily. Quite a pullback here in a big way. Now, Walmart. One of the companies, now we have some Walmart, Rocket Equities and Options, uh, below our entry point at this point. Uh, but again, if you're looking for a long-term position in some of these equities, quite a pullback. We just traded from 153. You're talking about a $25 pullback about from the highs we made December 1st. Really, from where we were prior to those earnings, you were at a price of 147. You just shaved $20 off the price of where we were February 17th. We're coming into an area of its breakout area of August. I believe that's when they actually put into play the Walmart Plus $98 deal. You're also coming back into a bar of strength from July 7th. The high of that bar, 127.55. Where are we trading? 127.56. 
within a penny, right? Yes, the high of that day, 127.55. We're trading 127.53 right now. That is the day that they actually just announced some of the details of the Walmart Plus plan, $98 free grocery deliveries, I believe it is, trying to compete with the likes of Amazon. Not sure they're gonna get it done, but to be in that arena, competing with Amazon in a big way. You also had the story out earlier this week, kind of going into FinTech, right? You had Walmart poaching two of Goldman's big guys in the consumer banking division. Uh, Walmart right now getting into the Analyze tab and checking out the fundamentals of this company. You're talking about a company with a market cap right now of $360 billion. Context, context is everything, $360 billion, the type of reach that Walmart has for the consumer base that it can reach in, in the cash flow that it has, uh, there is a lot of room for that market cap to grow, in my opinion, folks. It doesn't mean that this thing isn't going to trade lower as the market kind of struggles right now with what's going on. But when you look at where we are, you look at where we are on the high of that first high volume bar of July 7th. We're back below the breakout area from August. We had quite an acceleration with some volume there as well. You can look to that area. Now, even pulling this act to the lows of March, to the highs, we're right at the 50% retracement as well. 127.83, the 618 is 127, excuse me, 121.73 on Walmart. All right, what, other, what else we got going on? Gap, the parents of Gap, Navy, Banana Republic, predicting an apparel sales rebound this year as the COVID-19 pandemic recedes and people return to offices and schools. Looks like we might need some clothing. If we're going to be going out to public and go into the workforce, actually in offices, sales of its most recent quarter came in below forecast, though an online sales surge helped offset pandem pandemic related decline in store traffic shares up this morning. GPS is their symbol. Now, that's a longer term. We see the acceleration from five dollars. We just made a high above the high that we had in November. Today, 28.39, we've backed off a bit. We're still up about 6.2% on their earnings last night for Gap as they look for a strong rebound. And it would make sense, folks, right? You're going to be out more often. You're going to be going to restaurants. I really haven't been too concerned with updating my wardrobe in the last year. Um, the world's about to change for the better in a big way. You got Gap shares. From $5 to $27, we put this thing in, even on a five-year weekly, the high that we had, $35.68, we reached a high today of $28.39, the high bar we had back in February of 2019, so you're talking about two years ago, $31.39, so bumping up right towards those higher levels as well, gap though. Strong, strong acceleration. I'm not sure. We'll see how they rebound, whether they transition to the online marketplace. Um, but you're now well above where you were prior to COVID. Gap was sitting at about $19, and we're up a solid 50% prior to COVID. I mean, if you said that you were a buyer of Gap, you know, February of last year before COVID hits, malls get shut down, everything gets shut down, you hold it through, we're still $10 million people underemployed compared to where we were and you got gap 50 percent above those price levels they have some expectations to live up to now coming out of this earnings event stay tuned folks we'll be right back give us a call 877-927-6648 hey there i'm andy arbertine with tiger precious metals and stones whether you're looking to buy and sell precious metals or trying to find the perfect diamond ring i'm here to help i have over 15 years of experience with diamonds and precious metals you can call me directly at 727-329-8245 and I will personally answer any questions you have and help you find exactly what you're looking for. I will be your personal concierge in the metal and stone business. Give me a call today, 727-329-8245. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate L. LLC today at 
8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. My Skype is frozen. All right, I'm going to do that. Some little technical difficulties real quick. Let me get the chart back up here. One moment, folks. Okay, we got a chart of Virgin Galactic up here, down 15.3%. You talk about a parabolic move. Our man Basil Chapman, folks, if you didn't get a chance to check it out, Basil had a great webinar this week. Uh, one of the formations, not exactly what he talked about in the webinar. His webinar was about the retail trading phenomenon going on over the last few months, the impact that's going to have. Uh, we're jumping around a bit, but boy, it is still going on, folks. Very timely webinar by Basil. You got GameStop. Climbing yet again, up 10% to 145 today. We saw the run that Rocket Mortgage had to 43 bucks, back to 25. Um, but so Virgin Galactic, quite the parabolic move. We're back down to basically the area we started the year at, at about $25 after rising to 62.80, folks. You never want to see the chairman of a company selling his shares. All right, regardless of the reason they give you, never want to see that. You have Chamath Palahapitya. Not sure I'm nailing that name, uh, but he's been out here a lot. Seems to be a very astute investor, all right? He says some very bright things all the time. Um, he is the chairman of Virgin Galactic. Took the company public through a SPAC deal in 2019. Sold his remaining personal stake this week. Now, he still owns about 15.8 million shares indirectly through Social Capital, Hedda Sophia Holdings, um, a SPAC that he had formed with fellow investor Ian Osborne. 
Now, he says that, um, let's see, they had it in there, something to do with using these funds. Let's see, yeah, the details of the investment made public in the next few months. I remain as dedicated as ever. You know, the, the tough part here is you, you have to know when you're a chairman of a company, when you, when you sell your entire stake, that that company is going to suffer tremendously. Okay, so he was very aware that the, when the news broke that he's going to sell all his shares of his personal stake, he's the chairman of the company, that's going to punish the share price. All right, that's a tough, tough deal for me as an investor to square, and the market is having a tough time as well, rightfully so. You're down 16.5% today. The chairman ain't selling if the stock is going up, folks. Um, you know, remain committed and excited for the future. Um, yeah, he's still got 15.8 million shares, but share um, through that other SPAC he's got. But just pay attention to that. I would not be in that equity. Anytime you get the chairman selling, it doesn't mean you know, it's the end of the world, but not what you want to be buying companies in that area. All right, let's jump back to the S&Ps because we're seeing an acceleration. We're now below where we were at 830 this morning. You have the S&P trading at 37.53, the overnight low of 37.40. We jumped around on a couple occasions. I said already this morning, you get below some of these levels of 37.60. That's where we were at 830. That's where we were at 10 o'clock as well. We're now about seven points below there in the NASDAQ. Talk about an acceleration. We were at a high, folks, in the NASDAQ of 12,632. We just lost 300 points from where we were at 915 this morning in a big way. All right, what else we got going on to stocks making moves today? Broadcom, out with their numbers, pulling back today. They've had quite a run, some lofty expectations. They beat estimates by six cents a share. They made 661. The revenue slightly above estimates as well. You have it pulling back, though, on the open as semiconductor sales were below analyst forecast. The company, it appears, continued to be impacted by a shortage of materials used to make chips. AVGO is their symbol. You open at a high of 455. Now, the market's pulled back tremendously as well. Tech stocks pulling back as well. This is going to weigh on Broadcom. Um, but their earnings, you spike last night to 423. You open at 455. We're down 1.5% on Broadcom shares. But pulling up the daily, boy, it's been quite a run, folks. Even if you just take from where we were on October 30th to the run we had, we're bumping right up to the 382 of 436.79. We're trading within a dollar of that price level. I'm always keeping track of where we are, where we are on Fibonacci retracement levels because a 382 retracement is just a normal retracement in a bull market run or a bull move or a bullish move. So we've pulled back to that level and we did it in almost four days, right? You give back, I mean, think about that. We give back November, December, January, and February in literally four days. But that's how it goes, right? We inch upward, you accelerate lower, we're back to 435.60 on Broadcom. Now you really wanna see, that's just taking the run we had in November. I mean, if you ever have the run we had for the lows of March, you're talking about a 382 level of about 365 on that Broadcom move, which is, and I'm just going to eliminate this one for some clarity. The 382 would be 365, kind of where we chopped around on from about September until November until we accelerated higher. Volatility is going to persist, folks. Get ready for it. We'll jump over to the VIX. Speaking of volatility, we've got a VIX at 2849. Almost reaching 29, we almost got back up there, 28.98, the high intraday in the VIX. All right, let's jump around to some of those tech stocks as the NASDAQ is accelerating. Are we going to get a 2800 print in Amazon? Amazon, down about 1.2% today. Microsoft shares, actually positive by about 3 tenths percent at 227. Apple, talk about some volatility this week. We were up to 128 on Tuesday. You trade down to 118 pre-market. Apple's down about eight tenths percent. Google has been an interesting one. Up a percent. I mean, Google, just a remarkable acceleration for Google. All the heat they were facing with antitrust. Google, one of the strongest stocks out there in all of this, trading at 2,069, up a percent right now. Uh, for Google shares, we'll jump to some of the streamers. Netflix pulling back down about 1.3. Some of my favorites, <clears throat> excuse me, Disney, Backing off a bit, off 1.3%, jumping over to the ride hailing companies. Uber, down about 3% to 51.34 right now as they continue to struggle a bit. Uber is quite a case, to, <clears throat> excuse me, case study. When you think about they're going to have all the acceleration of ride sharing picking up. I mean, check out Lyft. Look at Lyft. 
Lyft's making new all-time highs today at 65. Well, Uber's going to benefit from that as well. Now, the pullback in Uber is that Uber Eats, the, the, the delivery business, okay? When I look at these two, though, folks, I see Uber accelerating higher. We have some Uber in the newsletter. That's why we have it. Um, they're well, perfectly positioned. We're, people are still going to be ordering food from these services, right? Whether it's DoorDash, Grubhub, that Uber bought. Um, you have Instacart out there with almost a $40 billion valuation. Those trends aren't going away. They might succeed a bit as we come out of COVID. They're not going away. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back to finish up the show. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Markets can rise and fall like the tides. Subscribe to Basil Chapman's newsletter, The Opening Call, and you too can ride the wave. Basil Chapman is an authority in technical analysis. His Chapman Wave trading system has been helping traders identify trends and capitalize on momentum in the markets since 1984. TFNN invites you to test Basil's proprietary Chapman Wave trading methodology with a monthly subscription to the opening call newsletter for only $149. Your subscription to the opening call comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee, as well as daily market updates on key indexes, stocks, and commodities. Ride the wave! Sign up for the opening call risk-free today. Introducing Primal Edge. Today, it's even more important to take a supplement that complements your health. Primal Edge is specifically formulated to boost your immune system and help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Our early ancestors found all their nutritional requirements in the wild environment. But today our food sources don't contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients that we need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based, vitamins, minerals, fatty and amino acids in an easy to use liquid form. Primal Edge is powered by highly concentrated humic and fulvic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They've been called miracle molecules because like sunlight, air and water, without them life cannot exist. That's right, Ellen. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every morning. morning. Primal Edge, just $89 exclusively at tfnn.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. I got a chart of the gold contract up here. Gold, quite the pullback from the highs we had in August, let alone the highs we had to start the year. We're down at 61.8% retracement from the full run we had from March lows, that low. And again, a weekly chart we got up here, 1450 up to almost 2100. We're down at 1696. Interesting when you look, we're back right to where we were. We got the high volume bar from the week of February 24th, that high 1691.70. We're trading within a few dollars of that price point, so you get some volume there. We got some consolidation that we saw from April all the way through to June, middle of June before we took off. 
We're down at 1695. We'll see if gold can hold quite the interesting environment when you look at rates that are shaping up. Head on over to the front page of TFNN, folks. My dad's gold report comes out every Monday morning. Great time to check that out if you'd like. And don't forget, if you jump over to the newsletters tab, you got some time this weekend. I encourage you to check out the opening call. Basil Chapman did a great subscriber webinar out there. What impact will the tremendous increase in the public's participation in the stock market these past few months have in 2021? You gain access to all those archives as well as his opening call newsletter. And we had a treat. We had Basil Chapman. Larry Pesvento, they switched it up today. So uh, Basil did Larry's program at 9 o'clock. He did the Tiger Technicians at 9. You got our man Larry Pesvento. He's going to be coming up live at noon doing his program today. So we got Fast Market next. Larry Pesvento live at noon. Steve Rhodes, Dave White, Tom O'Brien, my dad, all this afternoon. One final check on the markets. We got the S&Ps back above that 3760 level. We'll see if it can hold. We're currently negative by about two points on the S&Ps at 3762. Tech stocks hit hard. NASDAQ 100 down about six tenths percent, 12,380. And we'll finish it up with the VIX. Volatility index at 2819. Thanks so much for tuning in, folks. Stay tuned. Live programming all day at TFNN. We'll be right back, folks.